And I'm going to apologize for people. I did not tape this. And there's a couple people who asked to have it taped. So I'm just taping now. So I apologize ahead. Oh, sorry. Undo, Tina. So we're looking at a shape, and it's bounded by x equals 9, y equals 0. So the shape that we're rotating is this shape right here. And we are going to send it about the x-axis. And can you picture you're getting kind of like a bullet, kind of like a bullet or an acorn shape, right? Kind of like an a, a acorn, the bottom of an acorn, a bullet kind of shape. I don't know. What do you want to call this, 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 this bowl shape, right? A paraboloid, a paraboloid. If you're familiar with those terms, when you get into calculus three, you're going to be looking at paraboloids. So it's a bowl shape, right? As you rotate this about the axis of rotation, the x-axis, you get like this bowl shape, paraboloid. And we want to get the volume. So our job is we're going to look at this thing, we're going to revolve this shape, and we want to calculate the volume. To do so, we're going to introduce the first of three methods. We have a disk method, we have a washer method, and then we have a method that we talk about called cylindrical shells, okay? Some of you guys might remember these from, how many of you did this in calculus, possibly in high school? Sweet, so this is boring. Oh, sweet, so we can go really fast. Okay, all right, let's, well, not, not everybody's seen it. So, 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 so we'll see how this goes. So you guys can help me out here. We are going to take, and I'm going to put a note here. The first note, and I'm, the reason I'm going to put these notes is not just because I want these notes, but because it seems easy. We get home, we, we can do it, but then as soon as I throw in washer method and cylindrical shell method, everything that was easy is all of a sudden all complicated. So I'm going to put a couple notes here. This note is this. When you're using what's called the DISC method, so right now we're going to be discussing what's called the DISC method. We are going to be cutting so that we create DISCs that we are adding up to get our shape. So we are going to cut perpendicular to the x-axis. So with the DISC method, you cut, actually, we are going to cut perpendicular to the x-axis, but in general, you will cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Whatever axis you're going about, you're going to cut perpendicular to it. And when I mean cut, I mean we're going to take an imaginary slice right out of that shape. And when we pull that out, that shape is going to be a disc. And in order to calculate the volume of a shape, what we're going to do is we're just going to, in words, add up infinitely many disks. That's really what we're doing when we're doing this integral. We're adding up infinitely many disks of very, very, very infinitely small thicknesses. That's the theory behind what we're doing. So the mathematics, very simple. If we are cutting perpendicular to the x-axis, that makes our thicknesses being represented by dx, delta x or dx. So that means when I go to set up my integral, I need to throw a dx on the back end. If you don't have this correct to start with, once you get shapes going all different ways, you're going to have your whole problem wrong. So once you get your thickness, that's the first step. The second step then is to define the limits. These disks that I'm chopping are going to be ranging from a certain number of them, right, from different regions. And we are going to start and follow whatever letter it is here. If I'm making a thickness along the x-axis, then my range of limits had better be x limits. Do you guys see what I'm saying? 
So we are going to start at the x-axis, 0, and go all the way up until x is 9. Those limits must match the variable which you are integrating with respect to. So I'm going to highlight them because that's the next step. The first step is figure what am I cutting perpendicular to, define my thickness, get my limits. Now we take and we say, okay, so what are we doing? We're adding up disks. And what are disks? Disks are circles, so to speak, right? So really, the thickness is taken care of with dx. So all we have to worry about is the area of the circle. We just have to worry about the area of the circle. So I'm just going to put in here, we just have to worry about this area of the circle, which we know is pi r squared. We know that. It's the full pi r squared, not the semicircles that we're stacking, but a full pi r squared. And let's add then our r radius. The radius for any specific disk always starts at your axis of rotation, right? Because you're rotating around the axis. The radius for that disk starts right here at this axis and goes up to the edge of my shape. Does that make sense? Does everything seem clear? Yes, Alex. Does that mean our um, radius is root x? Yes, it is. So our radius, and remember, it's a distance. So it is a distance from this function to this function. So it's square root of x minus 0, which is square root of x. Correct. So our radius for this problem is just going to be square root of x. And so that now we have all our pieces, right? Now we put it together. So our volume for this solid of revolution is the integral from 0 to 9 of pi times our radius which is square root of x squared dx. <clears throat> and this is a simple integral. I might as well do it out because it's so simple. Plug in your top function. And often, you will see that your answers are going to have pi in them, right? Because we're talking about disks, an area of disks is all based on pi r squared. So you guys should be getting 81 pi over 2 cubic units. Does that make sense? Do you guys see that? It's fun. I mean, it's fun when you understand it. But what's the theory? The theory behind it is we're creating a shape composed of infinitely many disks. Those are cut perpendicular to your axis of rotation, okay? Those are the key things you want to think of when you're doing these problems. Who's got questions? Any questions? Everybody's good? You guys want to try some? Of course you do. This is easy. Tina, this is so easy. Are you kidding me? This is going to be so easy. But uh, hang on. I want to make sure I have a 30 seconds here to just, just any questions. So those people that, any questions? Quinn, ask Quinn. Uh, if we rotate that around the y axis, yes. we would just make the radius one half of what it is, and go from nine to negative nine. So there's different things. I have had different students do different ways. I'm going to show you a washer method, and instead, what we're going to think of doing is making an outside cylinder and making, like, doing pulling out a shape. We're going to create a solid cylinder and then we're gonna create the inside shape with a different radius, and we're gonna take that inside shape and pull it out of the bigger shape. Okay, so instead of the circle going like that, it will go like that. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, and we're gonna to have to do dy then, if we're going around the y-axis. We're gonna go dy, yes, yes. We're gonna do that, yeah, we'll get there. We're gonna get there. I love that you're thinking. Okay, guys, here is just the bigger picture, okay? This is in Canvas, in your notes, if you want to have this beautiful picture, right? It's the whole idea. Delta x means dx. It's a thickness. And what happens is these disks don't define our shape until you send it to zero. And that's where the integral comes in. That's where that mathematical symbol comes in. Maybe you guys don't appreciate the theory as much as I love that theory, but I think it's good. Ladies, does this match your notes on mine right here? Is this the same problem? I want to make sure I have the same problem. 4x squared, x yep. equals 1, x equals negative 1, y equals 0. Awesome! You guys want to try this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to wander. I'll put us on pause.
We're integrating circles. And the formula for a circle is pi r squared. And what's our radius? Radius is the distance from the center to the outside. Oops. For our picture, the radius is the distance from the axis of rotation, from the axis of rotation to the end of that region that's being rotated. In this case, the axis of rotation is just going to be 4x squared minus 0, or just 4x squared. And so you guys should be putting pi times 4x squared squared in your integral, which is pi times 16x to the fourth. And I think I'll just do 0 to 1 while I'm at it. What's that going to give me? 32 pi over 5x to the fifth from 0 to 1, which just gives me 32 pi over 5. Question. Did you put that 2 out front so you didn't have to do 1 and negative 1? I did. I put that 2 out front because I love zeros. If I can plug zeros in, I plug zeros in. Yeah, yeah. I do, because I was being lazy, 1,000%. Anon, question? Nope. Questions? Questions? How are we? Everybody okay? Okay. Ready for another one? We'll go about the y-axis this time. I think. I think I'm going to put you around the y. Questions? I'm going to wander. That way, if anything is confusing, you can let me know, okay? It, it, it's hard once we get tricky here. All right. Example three. Here we go. X equals Y squared. That's a sideways parabola, everybody. X equals Y squared. Y equals three. That's a horizontal line. X equals zero. And we're going to rotate about the Y axis. And I'm just going to leave this record since I messed it up and forgot to start recording again. X equals Y squared. Y equals 3. X equals 0. About the Y axis. It's a sideways parabola this time. I think you're going to get a similar shape, right? I think you're getting a very similar shape, except this time we're going around the Y axis. Okay? Horizontal movement, right? 
Yes, beautiful picture. So now your radius, yep, your radius is that. That's what I, I want, this whole shape. Yep, this okay. shape right here. And not any of this. Nope, All none right. else. Nope, that's it. Because we, th we're not going around the x-axis this time. Right. This time we're going to go about the y-axis. So we're trying to, so instead, uh, uh, we're only finding the top. The top yes. The okay. Yes. Yes, and I want to point something else out. Okay. Okay, guys. So here we go. We've got this shape, x equals y squared. Okay, and so it does this. It's got uh, one goes to one, four goes to two. So we've got this shape going like this. So this is x equals y squared. We have y equals three. And we have x equals zero. So I'm going to label all of my curves. And so, Alex, I want the shape that's the region that's bounded by all three of those spaces, all three of those curves. So it's this region right here. So the first step is being able to recognize what region it is that we're rotating, right? And then what gets next importance is what are we going about? We're going about the y-axis, okay? So the y-axis is what we're going about. So we're going this way about the y-axis. And so what it's going to do is create this big three-dimensional shape here. But notice I have highlighted in black the original region that I'm rotating, okay? That's important because this is the original region and this is where everything happens. The limits of rotation, the radiuses, everything happens within that black area, which is the original region. So... Again, we have a note that says, it, whatever axis we are going about, we want to cut perpendicular to that axis. So if we're going about the y-axis, we want to cut, are you with me, perpendicular to that axis. So when we cut perpendicular to that axis, we should be getting, right, do you guys see what I'm saying? As we go about the y-axis, we're creating and sweeping circles about the y-axis. And the circle has a radius, and that radius starts right here and goes from the middle to the edge of that circle that's being traced around. That is my radius. Okay, but let's set up our integral. Volume equals integral. What do I have at the back end? dy or dx? dy, because I'm going about the y-axis. The thickness, right? These circles have a thickness. It's going to be dy. So we got dy at the back end. What are my limits of integration? They have to be the thing that spans this black region, but it's got to be along the y-axis, right, Joel? Zero to three. It is zero to three, because I have to be on the y-axis this time. So my limits have to match. I've got to match. Beautiful. Thanks, Joel. That is perfect. I got to match, right? Then we have our circle, pi r squared. Pi, pi r squared. But what is my radius? My radius is this green distance here which is the distance this way. So this is a horizontal distance, and the way to get a horizontal distance instead of top and bottom is we take right, left. So right function minus left function. This function is x equals y squared. This function is x equals zero. So it's y squared minus zero, or just y squared. So my r has to be just y squared. So we get 0 to 3 pi y squared squared. 
etc., etc., etc. Okay, so that's going to give us 0 to 3 pi y to the 4th dy. That's 1 fifth, nope, pi over 5 y to the 5th, 0 to 3. 80. Is that what we got last time? I got to get better examples. I don't want to keep giving us similar numbers coming up. But it is kind of interesting. I think the bullet that we did had the same answer as this other shape that we did, which is kind of cool if you think about it in a way, the volumes of how all the shapes are interrelated like that. No, that's not right. No, no, Sorry, I messed that all up. Hang on, slow down. You're like, Tina, what did you just do there? Bad math. It's 3 to the 5th, 243, right? Oh, thank you. Next time, just say, whoa, Tina, that's wrong. How we doing? Guys okay? We're just doing lots of examples. I'm just going to tell you, and then we, we'll do one more, and then we'll do the washer method, okay? We'll do one more, and then we'll do the washer method. Oh, do you want to go about a y-axis or an x-axis? Well, we'll go about the x-axis. All right, we'll go back to the x-axis. Here we go. y equals x cubed. y equals 8. x equals 0. About the x-axis. Oh, no, I have in your notes y-axis, don't I? Mm -hmm. Hang on. Sorry, guys, not x-axis, y-axis. I do, I do, I want to do a second y. Tina, you know what? I am so... You cannot tell that I stayed up while trying to make sure everything was good with this. <laughs> and it's not.
All righty. So it, it really does. It takes lots of practice. Here we go. Y equals X cubed is a graph that looks like this. Two maps to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two maps to eight. Y equals eight is right here. This is Y equals X cubed. X equals zero. That's my region that's rotating. When it rotates, it's going to come around and it's going to make this bowl. Okay, so it's going to it's going to make this this elongated bowl, bullet shaped kind of thing. I cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation. And by cutting perpendicular, that makes our circles. And you can see that circle just being traced out around the axis that I'm rotating. That defines my thickness because that thickness of that circle has to go along the axis, dy. So I'm going about the y-axis. The thickness is dy. My limits have to be y-limits. So the only thing you have to fill in is your radius r, but your radius r is the distance from the axis to through my shape. So that's my radius r. It's going side to side, so that means I have to go right minus left if I'm looking for this distance, right? How long is this distance? It's this minus this. So that's simple, ooh, but, but I need a distance and I need to convert it because I have to write something in terms of y, not x, because I have dy. So if you know you're integrating with respect to y, your radius has to be expressed in terms of y. So if I'm going to look at this function, I can't write x cubed. I have to rewrite it as x equals the cubed root of y. And so what you're getting is you're getting is the volume from 0 to 8 of pi times the cubed root of y squared. And if I'm converting that into a fractional exponent, what's my fractional exponent, guys? It's what? Two-thirds, right? Two-thirds. And so my answer is going to be pi. Add 1 to 2 thirds gives me 5 thirds. So it's 3 pi over 5 y to the 5 thirds from 0 to 8. Ooh, 3 pi over 5, 8 to the 1 third to the 5th minus 0, which is just 3 pi over 5, 2 to the 5th, which is 32. Undo. I'll just put 2 to the 5th down. 32. 32 times 3. 96. So let's take that region that we just had, which was the cubic function. It was y equals x cubed, or we had converted it to the cubed root of y. 
we had y equals 0. No, 8, my bad, sorry. And x equals 0. And we were looking at this region. And in the last example, we rotated it about the y-axis. But this time, I want to take, and I want to rotate it about the x-axis. So I want to take the same shape, the same region, so to speak. But this time, instead of going about the y-axis, I want to go about the x-axis. Now, if you can imagine, we could take the shape and go about another line over here. We could go about another line somewhere else. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of shapes that we can take, but we'll go slow. We're going around the y-axis this time, the x-axis this time. Oh my god, Tina. Okay. So, if you can picture, we're going about the x-axis, kind of similar to the shape, well, not quite, but just make a shape, Tina. So, let's see what it looks like. So, I've got this shape. It comes around. You know what it reminds me of, this shape? Have you guys ever been at an aquarium before? And you take and you put a coin and then it goes around like a whirlpool? Have you guys ever seen that like on an aquarium before? Right? Like so we got this big cylinder sitting here and then we've got this funnel shape that it kind of goes into and it goes, you see what I'm saying? It's got that hole and you got that coin going around in, inside. Okay. So the big thing to notice when you do your shape this time is that there's a hole. And I can emphasize that because if I go about this axis right here, we can, we can see that hole that develops. There's a big gap, right? There's a big gap in here. So that when I rotate this around, I have this big hole. I have this empty space in here. So when I cut, perpendicular to my axis of rotation, just like you said, Quinn, when I cut perpendicular, cut perpendicular to the axis of rotation, in this case, the x-axis, the shape that I get when I pull it out has to have, well, it's a disc because I'm going around the x-axis, but it's a disc with a hole in it. So when I cut right here, right, I cut, but it's got a hole. I cut, but it's got a hole. Are you with me? So I'm cutting this big shape as it's going around. I'm cutting and I'm pulling out what we call a washer. Do you guys see that? So what you get when you come out is a washer. How do we know we're going to have a hole? Because the shape, the region that we're rotating is not but against the axis of rotation. If this shape is but against, when I rotate, it creates a solid. If this was going around this line, it's but against it, it would create a solid. But because it isn't, it's getting a hole. You guys see that hole? How do you get the volume of a washer? Well, it has a thickness, right? It has this thickness. We know we're going around the x-axis, so we know we have a thickness that's dx, okay? But what we're more worried about is the area of the washer which is one big circle, take away one little circle. That's exactly how you create a washer. You get the big circle, the little circle, and you take away the little circle from the big circle. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Yeah, Alex. Are we, so for that big circle, are yep. we taking an integral at all? We will. I'll show you in a second. Watch. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are. You will. Well, we're going to do it all in the same time. Watch. Say, we, you can. You can. 
Um, well, what I'm asking is, so I know we're going to have to take the integral of the cone, mm -hmm. which is we're going to subtract it back, but couldn't we just find the area of that circle without any integration? At the circle of the cylinder? Um, you could. Yes, you could. Yes, you could. But that's not how we're doing it, are we? Ah, no, but you could. That's, you could, 1,000%. Correct. We're going to put it all into one integral. Okay. But you could. Thank you for telling. Yes, in fact, Milo. Do you guys know Milo? He's a junior, I think, engineer major, sophomore engineer major. That's how he does it. He finds the outer cylinder, then he does his inner thing, and he takes it right out from the big surf cylinder. I do it all in one method, all in one step. But yes, you can do it that way. Notice what's happening is we've got two circles that make up a washer. We've got a big circle with a big R, a little circle with a little R. The area for the big circle, therefore, is going to be just what we think it is, pi times big R squared. And the area for the little circle is little r, so it's pi little r squared. So what we're going to do is add up big circles minus little circles. I know, it seems like a lot, but let's put it all together. Are you ready? So we're going to integrate. Oh, slow down. If you're looking in your notes, they show the same thing. So Alex, here's the method they talk about. They take big R minus little r. They have the outer radius minus the inner radius, yeah. okay? So that's what we're talking about. So let's set this volume up. We'll just set it up. We are going to cut perpendicular. How many of you guys are tired? How many of you guys are like, oh my God, Tina, I don't even want anything else in my brain. Yeah, I feel you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I, I feel 1,000%. Here we go. We have an X thickness. That means we are integrating with respect to the x-axis. Our limits. See my steps. Cutting perpendicular to the x-axis means I have a thickness along the x-axis, which implies I have x limits. What are my x limits? It's going to be what to what? Read. What's my x limits? Can you see? What do you got on that? Zero to two. Zero to two. Yep, zero to two. You got it. Thank you. I didn't mean to call on you. I'm sorry. But, but you got it. Zero to two. We got zero to two. Matches our X limits. Now, pi. Is it okay if I factor out that pi and make one pi with a big R squared and a little R squared? Now, what's my big radius? My big radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to the outside of the region. My radius is the distance from the axis of rotation all the way, are you with me here, to the outside of my region. That's my big R. And what is that? What, what, what curve is defining the outside of that region? It's the curve, I don't have it written here, y equals 8, right? That's y equals 8. So what is my big R for this problem? It's just the horizontal constant function, 8. So for this particular problem, big R is just going to be 8. Little r, let me change colors up. Let me get a purple color. Little r is the distance from the axis of rotation to the hole. It's the hole. It's this part. It's the inside part. It's the part that I'm pulling out. So it's giving me the gap. It's the measurement of the gap. That's what my little r is. My little r is that measurement of the hole or the gap. That's my little r. Can you see what function defines my hole, right? Can you see it? Joel, what is it? It's what? X cubed. X cubed. So X cubed minus zero. Again, that's my little r. So my little r is just X cubed because X cubed defines that hole. Are you all with me? And so when you put that integral all together, 
the volume is simply going to be along the x-axis from 0 to 2 pi. That outer function, which is 8 squared, minus that inner function, which is x cubed squared dx. That is the integral that we could use to set up to get our volume for that solid. And we'll work that out. So I know what time it is. Oh, okay, good. We'll set one more up, I think. So what do we get? Zero to two pi. You get 64 minus x to the sixth. When you have a power to a power, we multiply our exponents. What am I getting? Uh, pi times 128 minus 2 to the 7th is 128 over 7, I think. Oh, yuck. 1 minus 1 seventh. Yuck. I don't like this answer. Um, that's pi times 128 times times 1 minus 1 seventh. 7 sevenths minus 1 six sevenths times 6 sevenths, whatever that number is. I don't think 7 goes into 128. No, it doesn't. So I'm just going to write it like that. What's that number? Did anybody multiply 6 times 128 by any chance to get me a number? Uh, 768. 768. Last example for the day. Okay, and then we work. Just set it up. Just set it up. But I want you to notice something. Okay, we're going about the y-axis this time, okay? So if we're going about the y-axis, that means it's going to be dy, and we're going to have y limits, okay? So draw me last picture, and then we're done. Then you guys are out of here for your weekend, or for your math test that you got coming later this after, right? Your financial math log gift test. He's here today. Too bad it doesn't have a sick day. Too bad it's going to snow tonight instead of last night, right? What time does it start to snow? I think 7 or 8 tonight. 4 to 6 inches, I think. Yeah, it's going to snow tonight. 4 to 6 inches again. We'll see. We'll see, huh? We'll see. We'll see. This has been an interesting winter compared to last winter. Getting a lot of snow this winter. Well, for me, this is a desert rat who hasn't been back for a long time. It's a lot of snow. What shape is it creating as it goes around? Is it, is it like a cylinder with a hole drilled out? Is that what it's, it's giving you? Radiuses, just be aware, has to be written x equals, right? Because they're. Am I looking at this correctly? Right? Oh, that's where you're going about. I'm going to have to give you a minute. I'm going to give you some more videos. You get Y. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
course, they return it. Yep, so it's x equals y equals 0, like you said. y equals 0, x equals 2. Did they have to touch it? It doesn't have to touch this one, and this one, and this one, and just black it, that little space. Not this bottom one? Nope, just, just the top, just the top one. That is the shape right there. It touches y equals x equals 2, x equals 2, and y equals 2. Okay, so it's not just the two axes that it has to touch. It has to touch. Oh, no, no, no. So it's just this little area. It is this little area. Yes. Now, send this, like I can send it around something over here. I can send it this way. I want you to go, like you said, it's going this way. You see, so it's coming around. So I say mirror image it. So if it's going about the y axis, then I would use a different color. I would pick a different color, and I would draw the picture over here. But if it has to touch x equals 2, why would it be over here as well? Ah, the region initially has to start x equals 2. Okay. When it rotates, it is going to go out of the paper and make a whole different shape. Okay. That's, that's what it is, yes. So originally it has to touch it. But then, once you rotate it, it's going to expand out of the paper. Guys, let's see if you guys have this set up right. Here, quickly. Let me get this set up. So you got, oh no, do this page again. So you got this shape here, and it's this one here, and it's going around the y-axis. And as it comes around, oh, sorry, as it comes around, you guys are getting like this bowl shape, right? This, this, this shape thing here. So you have the volume equals because we're going about the y-axis we are cutting perpendicular to the y-axis so that means dy what's our limits guys help me out zero to eight yep because we have to go all the way up there to eight then it's pi big radius squared minus little radius squared big radius is the distance all the way to the outside. Little radius is the distance to the gap. Your big R value should just be what? Two. So that should be two squared. And your little r value, oh, is just my curve, is just my cubed root of y. So my little r is the cubed root of y. Like I said, we're just gonna, I'm just going to set it up, but it would be 0 to 8 pi times 2 squared minus the cubed root of y squared dy. And then you go from there. I'm going to send you some videos, guys, so you can look at these shapes as they're erupting to kind of give you some help. I encourage you, if, you're, if you are at all having any issues with the rotations, Come and visit me before we talk on Monday. Because on Monday, we're going to do some more washers, but I'm also going to introduce something called a cylindrical shell. So it's going to really get a lot confused up there. If you have time this weekend, get those stuff, get that homework done that's due next week, that Monday homework done as fast as possible, because it's just going to get confusing. Oh, any lips projects. If you want to hand them to me, hand them to me. If you want to put them in canvas, stick them in canvas. Good question. Because, because, because if I wanted it, if I wanted it to be 2 minus, yeah. then we're talking a distance. So it would be the distance between those two functions right there. Mm. And that's not the distance I'm talking about. 
we will get to that, don't right. worry. But what I'm looking at is I'm looking yeah. at the big radius here from the axis yeah. and then the little radius here from that axis. Do you see the difference, Jenna? Kind of. So, so when I say, can you see that this is the radius to the outside? Yeah. See ya. So this is, are you going up to the office? I'll be up if you have questions then. So it's this, it's this guy here, which is X. So this is bounded by this oh, curve and I this see. curve. Okay, I get it. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Did that help you? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm just going to figure out this question. Oh, nice. And I like to find okay. it out. So the base is the triangular region. Oh, how fun. Zero, zero, three, zero, zero, two. And the cross sections perpendicular to the y axis are semicircles. And so you got this equation for this line. It's 2 minus down 2 third. That's right. And so then you rewrote it. So it's y minus 2. Oh, 2 minus that was y. Just me checking if it was 2 right, minus y. That's what I yep, 2 minus saying. y, 3 halves. Good. And Thank you, Tina. Right, if, if he doesn't hit, come by and we'll practice, okay? Perfect. Yeah, Thank yeah. Thanks, Quinn. Have a great weekend. Uh huh, you too. So then this guy, well, okay. Hang on. Okay. Hang on. Hang on a second. Um, so the area is one half. This is R right here, which is negative 3 fourths times Y minus 2. I think there's a mistake in here. Why is it not? Why is it not? Because this is negative and this is also negative, so when they multiply together, mm -hmm. But why is it at 6 fourths? I think you did a couple mental math steps. So you have a one half in the front. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, so I just want to make sure. And then it's negative three halves. Are you? Is that right? Yeah. And then is it like this? X minus two. Is that what it is, Munia? Um, X and two is in parentheses. Okay. Er, okay. So if y you're okay, minus. I'm gonna. It's y minus two. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just gonna do this. This is negative three fourths times y minus two. And so if I multiply, that's going to give me negative 3 fourths y plus 6 fourths, which is 3 halves. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I have 3 fourths. Yeah, I think, and now I'm going to square it. Okay. I think that's where you made the little mistake right there. And then when you square it, you would get 9. Um, so I think this is a 6 fourths instead of a 3 fourths. I think you need a 6 fourths here, or a 3 fourths. So then, when we square it, it'll give you 9 sixteenths, and then it'll give you, the back end will be 9 fourths instead of 9 sixteenths, okay? And the middle part is going to be minus, 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 18 fourths. Now I usually just do it like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm
trouble on this one. I was asking the tutor as well, and I couldn't figure it out. Oh, no. Which one? Is, which tutor? Josh. Oh, we couldn't? Yeah. He was like, we tried it, like, with Y's. My guess is X's. he missed the half. Um, my guess, most of the tutors are going to miss this half. Like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think this should work. I do. I think I have to stop my recording. I think it's still recording. <laughs> <laughs>